is up everybody welcome back to my channel i've been meaning to make this video for such a long period of time and i finally have some time today to sit down and talk to you guys and tell you what exactly i eat as an intermittent alternate day faster i've been doing intermittent fasting for a little over two and a half years now and my diet has definitely changed from the beginning of the journey to now however the great thing with intermittent alternate day fasting or fasting in general is that you can really eat what you want and you don't have to restrict your foods so in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the things that I have eaten and the things that I eat now to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what you can, if you want to, eat on your eat days. The first thing we're gonna talk about today is breakfast. And I'm going to talk about to-go breakfasts because there's a lot of people who have to go to work every day and don't necessarily know what to bring for work in the morning. Sometimes they stop and get fast food on the way in. Sometimes they might grab something at the office cafeteria or whatever it might be. But I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of things that I did whenever I worked in the office and I needed something that I could make the night before that I could take with me the next day to work. The most common thing that I ate on my eight days whenever I work in the office was overnight oats. And they are so simple and easy to make. And I'll tell you why. Basically, all you need is a simple yogurt. I love the Greek yogurt light and fit. It's about 80 calories. You take one of these, a half a cup of old fashioned oats, a half a cup of milk of your choice. I personally prefer to use almond milk for the calorie count and it tends to last me a lot longer than dairy milk, which is something that I don't really drink. And a teaspoon of chia seeds. You mix all those ingredients up in a bowl, set it in your fridge overnight, and the next morning you have a nice little quick breakfast you can grab before you go to the office. Another thing that you can also make that I particularly was very fond of, and still kind of do sometimes to this day, is healthy chocolate peanut butter cheesecake. It's a recipe I actually just posted on my channel not too long ago, so you guys might have seen it before. But basically all it is is some Greek yogurt, some powdered peanut butter, unsweetened cocoa powder, sweetener of your choice, a tablespoon of peanut butter, and you set all those ingredients in your refrigerator and the next morning it's a nice thick cheesecake type of breakfast that you can also take with you in the morning. I also used to do a lot of oatmeal, which is something that I still do do today. Basically, you would take in half a cup of your old fashioned oats, maybe mix in a little bit of cinnamon, maybe some swerve brown sugar, stir that up, put some water in your bowl or milk if you prefer. At work, I would do water, but at home, I definitely prefer to do milk. Put it in the microwave and heat it up. It is so much more filling and satisfying than those little instant packs that you can get in a package. Plus, this will take you a lot longer than those little instant packs and you can really make it however you want that way. Another option for breakfast would be something as simple as cottage cheese and berries or yogurt and berries. You could also do something like meal preps on breakfast sandwiches if that is something that suits your fancy. One of the big things that I also used to make and is a recipe that I still use to this day as well would be two ingredient dough. You can make bagels with that and all it takes is a cup of self-rising flour and a cup of Greek yogurt. You mix those together, knead it out into a dough and then make your bagel forms with it. They are so tasty and so dense. Definitely better than something that you would get at a grocery store that's half full of air. And those would be some of my to-go breakfasts for the morning if you're working at the office. Now, if you are home, you have a variety of things that you can do in the morning for breakfast. My biggest thing recently has been the protein pancake mixes. I love these because a half a cup is 190 calories, which basically, if you cut the recipe in half, according to the directions on the back, you could have two pancakes for 190 calories. You're getting in 14 grams of protein if you're using just water. And then you can also pair it with a couple of eggs, some egg beaters, some egg whites, some sausage, some bacon, anything like that to kind of give you a really filling breakfast. I've also been turning a lot to avocado toast with eggs and I love bagels with smoked salmon. Each of these breakfasts seem to tie me over for a really long time into the afternoon. So it's definitely something that can help you get through your eat day. And in the long run, it'll help you get through your fasting day the next day because you're getting in so much protein that's helping keep you full. Also another thing you could do at home, kind of like what I was talking about with the oatmeal, is you could do protein oatmeal. If you get any kind of protein from your store, this is from Aldi, it's the elevation version, you could put a scoop in with your oats, some milk, some sweetener, some brown sugar, anything that you would prefer to add to your oatmeal, cook it on the stove top. It, it makes so incredibly much. You would think half a cup of oats wouldn't make a lot, but doing it on the stove top with milk adds so much to it. 
I love topping it with a banana or some fruit. And I've also added in some Greek yogurt as well to give it a little bit of more creamy texture if you like creamy oatmeal. I also recently made a recipe using Thin Slim's Foods Zero Carb Bread that is 90 calories for two slices and they have zero carbs in them. A lot of people have asked me what the consistency is like of this bread and I personally do like it. I think it's better if you toast it or maybe do something with it besides eating it plain, but throwing it onto the skillet or dunking it in some milk and eggs for some French toast has also been a really good breakfast that I've been able to enjoy recently. Something like that, if you don't wanna use a really high calorie topping, you can throw some fruit on top, you could throw some peanut butter on top or some almond butter. I personally prefer almond butter, which is something else that you could add into your oatmeal. Or you could get the Lacanto maple syrup, which is one of my favorite monk fruit syrup sweeteners. Or you could also get the Birchbender's magic syrup, I believe it's called, which is also a really good alternative to straight maple syrup. Let's move on to lunches now. For lunches, whenever I would go into the office, one of the biggest things I would always get was the Starkist tuna packs or the Starkist chicken packs. I would take this with some lettuce, maybe a tomato, and wrap it up in a tortilla such as this. These tortillas have 11 grams of dietary fiber. They're 50 calories and only four nets of carbs if you're worried about your carb count. Something that I particularly am more conscious of now, but in the beginning, I knew nothing about counting carbs. I knew nothing at counting macros. I really just ate what I wanted, but watched my calorie count, which is something I still kind of do today. But like I said as well, I also am much more carb conscious than I was then. Like I said, you'll take a tortilla, one of the chicken creations or tuna creations from Starkist, wrap it up in a tortilla, and that would be a great lunch for you to have. You can pair it with some vegetables. You can make some chips. I love using lavish bread. I will take these and I will cut them into chips. One lavish bread is 12 grams of protein and 120 calories. These make perfectly crispy chips. Of course, if you wanted to use this for your wrap as well, you most certainly can. I just prefer to use the extreme wellness ones for these wraps. And really besides that, the only other things that I would do for lunch whenever I worked at the office was take leftovers or I would make something simple like a sandwich. I wasn't too picky or big on what I would bring into the office. Sometimes I would bring in something like a can of soup that I could quickly heat up in the microwave, but I typically stayed away from frozen meals in general. Progresso has some really great light soups. This is 160 calories per can. You can even add a little bit to it yourself if you would prefer to. For example, something like this, this chicken and dumplings. If you have a chicken packet, you can add these together and give yourself a little bit more chicken in something like this. Add a little bit more seasoning. It doesn't have to be just the can. Just add in what you think would be good and what you would preferably like. Now that I'm home though, my lunches can kind of vary in a bunch of different ways. Sometimes I will throw together a spinach salad with some berries, some chicken, and some of the Skinny Girl dressing. They have so many different kinds. This one is the Buttermilk Ranch. I also have the Poppy Seed and they have a really great raspberry vinaigrette dressing that I I love to put on a berry salad with some chicken, which is another option that you could totally take to work. Something that you can do as well to kind of help you meal prep for the week is to get a rotisserie chicken. One rotisserie chicken can last you a week and it's about 450 at the grocery store. You can make so many things with that. You could make wraps with it. You could put it on a salad. You could add it to a soup. You could even add a rotisserie chicken to pasta. Some recipes that I come across on Pinterest calls for a rotisserie chicken so you can just kind of shred it up yourself and throw it in without having to worry about cooking the chicken, which is also really awesome. If I tend to make a sandwich, I really like to use the zero carb bread that I talked to you guys about earlier, but I also like to use the delightful Sara Lee bread. It's 45 calories per slice as well, 90 calories for two whole slices. You can get whole wheat and a couple other versions, healthy grain I believe as well at the store, but this is all that they had whenever I went this past week. I highly suggest that if you want more options or some inspiration to go to Pinterest and just type in quick lunches or lunch meals or something like that. If you're wanting to stay within a calorie range, you could definitely type in 300 calorie lunches or 500 calorie lunches if that's something that you're leaning towards but these are just some of the things that I preferably like to do whenever I work at the office and whenever I'm home. Dinner is always a really hard one for me to answer whenever people ask what do you eat as an intermittent alternate day faster because I'm a foodie and I love to eat everything. So with that being the case, my meals are always changing and I cannot give you a specific thing that I eat at dinner time. Something my fiance and I have really been enjoying recently has been a spicy vegan gnocchi meal that includes spinach, pasta sauce, and some white beans. Really all it takes is some gnocchi, some vegan meatless sausage, I get this at Aldi, pasta sauce, which you can either make it as spicy as you like or you could get something not as spicy. 
like I mentioned before, white beans and spinach. Make a meal with that really quick and it will last you a while. It is super filling and also super tasty. If you have a big family, I totally understand how pasta can go a long way too. Some of my favorite pastas to get whenever we do eat pasta would be something like the Bonza pasta. It's made from chickpeas, totally full of protein, so it also is very filling and a lot better for you than most pastas that you can see on the shelf. I like to do this or a whole wheat pasta as my carb, or you can even get this pasta from Thin Slim Foods as well. It is called the Impostable Pasta, and it is an extremely low carb pasta as well. It looks like here it has about six grams of of carbs per serving. If you're wanting to do something else, like maybe some burgers or something like that, you could also make ground chicken burgers or ground turkey, for example. It doesn't necessarily have to be beef. Making up a burger with either chicken or turkey is a really great alternative if you're not wanting to do beef. Also make something with shrimp, some shrimp tacos, a shrimp linguine. You could get a spaghetti squash, make some Alfredo sauce, or even buy some at the store, add this into it, and you'll have a really delicious veggie-filled shrimp linguine. I also highly recommend if you don't have one, getting an air fryer. I just got one about a month ago as a wedding gift, and I absolutely love my air fryer. You do not have to cook anything in oil now, so anything that you would think that you need to fry, you don't have to do in the air fryer anymore. For example, I make this fried chicken recipe in the air fryer and it turns out wonderful every time. It's really one of my favorite recipes that I've been making recently. You could do something like fries, chicken nuggets, something for the kids, easy, pizza rolls, whatever it is you feel like in your air fryer, which is absolutely amazing. I swear, it's like the best thing since I've fried it. I'm so glad I have one now. But like I said, dinners are a harder one for me to tell you guys about just because I do so many different things. So I typically try to always post my recipes on my Snapchat or my Instagram so you guys can see them. And if it's something that you think that you would like, please let me know, comment back on it, and I will try to get the recipe out onto my recipe blog. Let's move on to snacks now. Snacks can be tricky, to be honest. I usually like to keep them to something like a yogurt if I feel like I need something, maybe some cottage cheese and berries, similar to what I would do for breakfast, but a much smaller portion. Or you could do something like yogurt covered cranberries. These are one of my favorite snacks. I don't like raisins, but there's something about cranberries that I really like. One package of these, I feel good. You could also do something like mixed nuts. My fiance and I love deluxe mixed nuts. We go through so many of these. But the bad thing about them is that they are definitely higher in calorie and you don't get a lot. So that's kind of something that you need to think of. Kind of like the same thing as the yogurt covered cranberries. Both of them are pretty small portions, but for pretty high calories. So recently what I have been doing is taking one of my tortillas, a banana, and some peanut butter kind of making like a banana peanut butter burrito. You can either chop it up or eat it like a burrito and have that as a snack and it should help you get through the day. It is super filling. You could also do kind of like what I said, make some lavish bread chips, eat some fresh berries, some fresh fruit, some fresh vegetables even. Those are really healthy good snacks that are actually gonna fill you up and they're lower calorie than if you were to turn to something like a bag of Doritos or something like that. But I will say to each their own, if you prefer to snack on Doritos, go for it. That is the wonderful thing with intermittent fast. You can really eat what you want. I personally prefer to be a lot more healthier in my choices now than I used to be, kind of like what I said at the beginning of this video. But as long as I keep everything within my calorie count or at my TDEE, total daily energy expenditure, then I don't really mind what it is that I'm snacking on. Like I said though, I do try to keep it a lot more healthier so that way my calories go further. With that being said, we're gonna talk about desserts. Everybody likes a good dessert. I absolutely love lemon flavored things. So when Easter came around and they brought out the lemon Kit Kats, your girl was sold. She wanted to eat all those lemon Kit Kats. I don't want you to think that you have to eat 100% healthy all the time with this. You are a human and it's okay to find balance. It's okay for you to eat cake. It's okay for you to eat cupcakes. Of course, not every day, but in moderation, sure. There's no harm in that. With that being said though, I do like my ice cream as well. I love Breyers Carb Smart Ice Cream. They have a vanilla and a chocolate and I believe about two thirds cup is about three grams of carbs, which is pretty low. Plus the calorie count is significantly lower than the normal Breyers ice cream. You can also try the Halo Top, the Rebel, the Skinny Cow. There's so many different brands of ice cream out there now that kind of leans to being a little bit less sugary and more healthy for you if you're craving a dessert. Something that I recently found at Target were these Miss Jones Baking Co. Cake in a Cup. I know some people really like the little cakes and mugs and stuff like that, but these cakes in a cup, come to 170 calories for the warm double chocolate one, or you could even get a confetti pop one for 160 calories. They're definitely a nice little treat to have after dinner if you're craving something a little sweet. 
I also tend to really like the Lenny and Larry Complete Cookie. They have a bunch of different versions of this as well. Chocolate chip, snickerdoodle, the triple chocolate one I believe it's called. You put that in the microwave on a plate for a little bit and warm it up and it is so incredibly good. Put some ice cream on there and you got yourself a freaking delicious little dessert. <laughs> and then of course they have protein packed muffins from Kodiak Cake, just like the protein pancakes that I showed you earlier. This is also a really good alternative if you're wanting something sweet. Something else that I really like doing recently is adding protein powder to yogurt, mixing it up and putting it in the fridge. Kind of like what I talked about earlier for that chocolate peanut butter cheesecake. That can also be a really good dessert for you as well. It's packed with protein. And it'll definitely help keep you full through your fasting day the next day. So there you guys have it. That's just some examples of things that I do for my meals during the day, plus my snacks and my desserts. There's so many things out there though that you really don't have to fear what it is that you're eating. I hope that makes sense. With intermittent fasting you can really eat whatever you want as long as you're within your calorie count and you're not overindulging and doing things like the cakes cupcakes sweets in moderation feel free to follow my pinterest board if you're interested in seeing any more of the recipes that kind of have given me some inspiration to the meals and things that i have eaten and like i said if you follow me on snapchat or instagram i try to post all of my meals on there as well so you guys can also kind of see what it is that i'm eating for my three meals during the day now, I know some of you guys probably have questions. One of them would probably be, well, what do you eat on your fasting days? The answer is I try to eat absolutely nothing on my fasting days. I like to have my coffee and my water and stick to just those two things for 38 hours. If you don't think you can make it that long without food, you are allowed to eat up to 500 calories and that is considered a modified fast. That is what I did with my first week of intermittent fasting. I had to eat up to 500 calories on my fasting days to help me get through. The week after that, I was able to push through and fast continuously for 40 hours. I'll link a couple videos below for you guys, including about how I counted my calories in the beginning, any tips for the beginners who are just now starting, and my whole experience with intermittent alternate fasting to cover any other bases that you might have. I also have a couple of frequently asked question videos out there as well that you guys can also check out. Right now, we currently have a group on Facebook called 95 Days of Fasting, which is kind of a challenge going on right now, but after this challenge is over, it's gonna be changing to a fasting community Facebook page. Everybody on there is so kind and so understanding and so supportive and they can also help answer any questions just in case I can't get to it. So please feel free to join that group as well. But really, that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know I've been meaning to make it for a long time now. I'm so glad I was finally able to get it out. I hope to come up with even more informative videos for you guys in the future. So thank you so much for stopping by and watching this one. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you guys on the next one.